Hey guys, John V from Phone Winnie here. You're watching our video review of the Huawei Ascend Mate 2. When you look around, there are plenty of different phablets to choose from, but Huawei's hoping that you're gonna like its latest offering in the Ascend Mate 2, just because it has one aggressive price point. Its design's as generic as they come and doesn't have enough distinction over other tablets in the space right now. Therefore, it's not shocking that we find its design to be uninspiring and bland. It's constructed out of plastic, a little bit on the cheap side with it. Construction's decent, but like I said, it just doesn't have enough distinction to be attractive. Due to its massive size, it just makes it nearly impossible to comfortably hold. Our fingers just stretch around, so it's better to just use two hands with this one. Just like its predecessor, the display is insanely massive. It features a 6.1 inch 720p IPS LCD panel, giving it a pixel density count of 241 pixels per inch. Of course, it's still detailed to make out fine text in the web browser, but considering that they had over a year to make improvements, we were hoping to see just a little bit better resolution. Despite that, it still has a pretty good looking screen, produces some natural looking colors, it has a very strong brightness output, so outdoor visibility is good, and it maintains its clarity even at the widest viewing angles. Looking around its silver trim bezel, it features all the ports and buttons we'd expect to find. So you have a micro USB port, you have the various microphones, three and a half millimeter headset jack, power button, and volume control. Luckily, Huawei has made some improvements to its camera as it now features a larger 13 megapixel rear camera and a five megapixel front facing one. Pulling off the rear cover, we're given access to its micro SIM and micro SD card slot. The battery itself, which is a 3900 mAh one, is not something we could remove. Establishing its own customized Android experience last year with the Motion UI, we do see some minor tweaks with this year's version. However, it's running on top of Android 4.3 Jelly Bean, so it's a little bit behind the times at this point. Of late, many companies have been doing away with the standard apps panel with Android. Instead, they put all the icons on the home screen. That's what we have here with the Motion UI. And the thing with that is that it becomes a little bit cluttered if you're not that organized. Operating the phone with one hand is tough due to the size of the display. That's why Huawei has incorporated this new one-handed UI mode here, but unfortunately, it's only available in few applications. For example, you have it here in the dialer and when you're actually composing something with the keyboard. So basically, our finger encompasses the layout, so it's just great for one-handed operation. But you don't see it in other applications like the calculator or even the calendar. And finally, if you're too bothered by the complexity of typical Android, Huawei has this alternative simple mode here, which gives it a very Windows Phone-like look. So essentially, you're presented with very basic things. Our particular review unit is powered by a quad-core 1.6 gigahertz Cortex A7 processor coupled with two gigabytes of RAM. It's not the most demanding hardware, and it kind of shows with more processor-intensive stuff. What's so special about the phone is that it's Huawei's first device to integrate a 4G LTE radio into its own in-house chipset. So here in the US, we have uh, LTE connectivity via AT&T and loads of pages. It's wonderful for web browsing just because you get a spacious size display and the performance too is pretty good. In addition to Google Play Music, you could use Huawei's own music player. It has a very inviting look and feel. You could even categorize the song depending on your mood. And as far as the audio quality of the speaker, it's pretty good, strong, and has a nice crisp tone to it. Again, it would've been awesome to have a higher resolution screen, but we can't complain just because it's fantastic for the video watching experience. It supports a wide array of different video codecs, and it looks pretty nice too. There's very little change to the camera interface with the phone. It still has a lot of different shooting modes and even manual controls, but it's mostly menu driven. In general, we're pretty happy with the camera's 13 megapixel camera. It has a good amount of detail. You have a strong focus towards the center area, whereas these edges tend to have a little bit of a softer tone. The only thing we notice is that sometimes photos come out a little bit on the underexposed side. On the flip side though, we're rather disappointed with the 1080p video recording quality. It's just really lacking with the details and on top of that, the audio recording is rather muffled. 
When we're in very quiet environments, we don't have any issues with call quality just because voices are clean, crisp, and mostly distortion free. But in noisy environments, they kind of drown out just because the earpiece and speakerphone emit very weak volume. If there's one thing you really have to know about the phone, it's the fact that it has the best battery life out there. Its 3900 milliamp hour battery manages to produce over 11 hours in our battery benchmark tests, and in everyday use, it translates to two and a half days of usage. The specs are meh, the design is bland, but when you look at the overall picture, you'd be surprised the Sendmate 2 is a pretty good phone. For one, it has the best battery life in a smartphone that we've tested, but more importantly is the price point. You don't have to sign a contract for it. You could pick up the Huawei Sendmate 2 online for only $300 outright, which goes to show it has a lot of value to offer. So if you guys want to learn more about the Huawei Sendmate 2, you could check out our website, phonerena.com. John V, thanks for watching.